Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I am passionate about electric cars, and I actually put one on my first slide. It's a very fancy Tesla model. Um, you can know what Tesla looks like. That's not it. Um, but actually, on the electric car thought, uh, Texla actually now has eight electric vehicles in its fleet, and I took one here today from Austin, so that's a first. Yeah, they're not actually released yet, so, but I know the people over there, and I get to twist their arm a little bit. But that's something we can talk about. Okay, today it's... Um, on the program, it said Project Tracker and Open Data, but I'm going to flip it up a little bit. I'm going to do Open Data first, and then Project Tracker at the end, because you really can't have one without the other. You kind of have to build up to Project Tracker, okay? We're going to talk about the people inside the section that do the work. We're going to say, talk about attributes, locations, systems, report, applications, and then we'll talk about a little bit at the end. There's the people. So those are all the people in data management section. Um, I'm going to let you look at them for a minute while I read off a few things. The mapping branch's manager is Chris Bardash, and there's Chris right there. Uh, we, he's responsible for managing the 313,000 plus miles of line work in Texas. That's all the line work, all the roads, all public roads. So if you're thinking in your head, oh, the one that I live on, yes, that one. Uh, if you're thinking of county road, yes, that one as well. Uh, we manage all the base map layers, uh, administrative layers, polygons, kind of all that good stuff, as well as railroad lines and cemeteries. Um, County Road Inventory, Planning Map, Open Data Portal, Project Tracker, all those good things. You're going to hear about those today. David Friedenfeld, which this guy right here who looks very suspicious. He is suspicious. Um, he's very funny. I wish he was here today. Um, he's responsible for the roadway inventory at TxDOT. When you think roadway inventory, it used to be TRM, Texas Reference Marker System. It's no longer that. It's GRID, the Geospatial Roadway Inventory Database. He handles all the training and user management, so if you need access to that, you've got to give David a call. He also handles HPMS report, annual reports, functional classification, national highway system, all those things. He's experts in all those things, okay? Good stuff. But first, we're gonna talk about attributes, because that's really what everything's built on. You, some people call them assets, some people call them whatever, but an attribute. And an attribute is a piece of information that determines the properties of a field or tag in a database or a string of characters in a display. That's a horrible definition. That's the computer science definition, but in, at TxDOT, we just call that number of lanes. That's an attribute. Or we say the number of vehicles that travel along a roadway, that's AADT, that's an attribute. Okay, how many attributes do we have at TxDOT? How many? It's on the screen. 200, 200 plus, right? Along 300,000 some odd miles of, of line work. That's a lot of attributes. Where is it stored? It's stored in grid. What is grid? A database. All right, it's a spatial database. It, it's got a front end on it, a bunch of special stuff, lots of, lots of rules. So there's, if there's 200 attributes, there's 200 rules. So we'll make sure we put an attribute in the system that's actually valid. It's, it's uh, harder than it looks. Problems. Attributes should be clearly defined. So if you can't clearly define your attribute, it's not going in the database. If you can't describe it, it's not going. It should be reviewed regularly and updated. There's a thought, right? But it changes frequently along a route. So I-35 starts where? Laredo, and it ends where? Canada, there you go, it's close to Canada. No, but through Texas, it goes up through uh, Dallas, Fort Worth splits, right? But it's not the same number of lanes all the way, right? Sometimes it's six lanes, sometimes it's four lanes, sometimes it's 27 lanes. Anybody have a 27 lane roadway? Good, that doesn't exist. <laughs> not in Texas anyway. Uh, this is what an attribute table looks like on your lower right. Uh, you've got a posted speed as an example, and it's got from and two DFOs. DFOs just means distance from, distance from origin. So in Laredo, that's the zero point. Up in Oklahoma, that's the highest point, whatever number that is, 300 and some change. Okay, so if you want to look at attributes, there's ways to do that. We're going to look at the open data portal. The open data portal is an out-of-the-box uh, piece of software provided by Esri, but we have put all of our data that's in the inventory available in the open data portal. It's open to the public. Anyone can go out there and see it. You can look at the data. You can download the data. You can filter the data. You can search for data. It doesn't really matter. You can go up here and search. You can search highway. And it'll find everything that had to do with highways and everything that we put out there. Designations, highway system, freight network, it's all there. So if you're a consultant or you need to do some work, you don't have to call us. We're happy to talk to you. Right? I'm going to give you my office number, my direct line later. But this is it, okay? It's updated regularly, it's out in the open data portal. All right, 
So we have attributes. Next, we have locations. Because if you have an attribute, but it sits alone by itself, it's not really useful. Location is next. And we determine location using construction plans, aerial photography, GPS, things like that. The latitude and longitude values are the base reference network. And we have a nice, nicely drawn road that gives you an example. Is there a road that looks like this in Texas? It's Interstate 14. <laughs> uh, somebody got it. So the XYs determine the points, right? The points of deflection along the line. That's what, that's what you're seeing here. So each vertex gets an XY. That vertex also gets the DFO, which in this case is zero, then one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six being the max length of the route. And then the 55, right? That's the posted speed from the previous slide. Remember that? 55, 45, 55, 45. That's that attribute applied to that location. That's how we do that, okay? That GS line work is then passed into grid where the linear referencing portion that happens, that little magic. And there's multiple linear referencing systems at TxDOT. What are they? Anybody, go ahead. That's why I'm talking. You have the control section mile point. You have the reference marker and displacement. You have DFO. And while traditionally lat long hasn't been considered a linear referencing method, it, it is in this system, right? So you have four. You also use intersection offset, right? So little green signs. How many people have seen those on the highways? A couple hands, right? Those are reference markers. They look small, but they're about yay big. Okay. We use attributes and locations, and we use that information to define systems. What's a system? What's a system? National Highway System is one. You hear that one a lot. There can be any system you want. We have a freight network. Is that really a system? Well, yeah. OK. Energy, se energy sector network, that's a system. Functional classification system, those are all systems. OK. But we use those locations that are, that are uh, managed by the districts and TPP staff. We can cook them up into whatever system we want. It's not a computer system. It's a system of roadways. It's a subset of roadways. OK. And if you want to see these systems, we're going to jump out to something called the statewide planning map. How many people have used the statewide planning map? That makes me happy. How long have you been using it? Years, right? The first version came out in 2006. So what you're looking at is the next version of the statewide planning map. Okay, there's a lot of things going on that too much to explain, but there's some new things that we integrated. So basically, identify is always on now. So if you just want to click on a road and you haven't actually turned any different tools on, it'll tell you something about that road. And you can, you know, you, at this scale, you get multiple. It'll just take you through each segment. We added new layers. There's the freight network. There is also a toll network. So you can see where all the tolls are. If that's something that you want to know about. OK. And also said that there's the National Highway System, right? If you want to see the National Highway System, there it is. So if you ever want to see the legend, the legend will tell you more about it so you know what those colored lines mean. Okay, but those are systems. Those are based on attributes and locations. So some pieces of road can be considered on a system as it's inside the urban areas area or outside the urbanized area. Okay? Makes a difference. All right. Reports. So we have attributes, we have locations. We summarize all those things into reports. And we do it at the end of at the end of the calendar years when we stop counting, but it takes us a good six months to get all the information back and we run into a report to do June 15th, uh, the highway performance monitoring system report. We also put it inside annual reports, multi-year data tables, and I have a whole table of facts. This is good stuff. So center line miles, we have on and off system. On system means what? Owned by TxDOT. Off system means not owned by TxDOT city streets, county roads. You can see that most of the mileage is in the off system, but if you look down to the daily VMT, most of the usage is on the on system. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, if you look at the totals and state ranks, so we're number one in the nation in centerline miles, number one in the nation, lane miles, truck VMT, and we're second in daily VMT. Who's first? California, California. California. yep. So I have two column, uh, one column with two numbers in red. Why are they in red? So I want, I want to draw your attention to them, right? So daily truck VMT, daily truck VMT, that's a big number, 76 million. What could we relate that to? Say again? 
center line, but a point of reference. When we talk about numbers this big, what's the point of reference for 76 million? It's the average distance from the sun to Venus. <laughs> every day. So every day in Texas, trucks drive the average distance from the sun to Venus. So look at the next number. Which planet is that? It's the average distance from the sun to Saturn. So every day. So annual reports, if you want to see these reports, we publish them out on text.gov. Uh, we have a whole page for it. Uh, we have them by year. You have three flavors. 2016 will be published probably within the next day. I tried to get out here by the conference. I didn't do it. There's a PDF report. So if you just want to see the PDF, you have that. If you want all the GIS data that went into the report, you have that. If you're not a GIS person or a PDF person, but you can work Excel like a magician, you have an Excel version. OK? So you've got all those. So everything that we have, you have. You have access to. And there's other reports that we do. We send them out. There's TxDOT consumers, all the different applications you've heard, STARS, UTP, DCIS, PMIS, CRIS, then all the federal folks to get the information, use it for their problems. Not problems, but for their work. OK? Applications. So. All those attributes and locations and systems roll up into applications. The one we're going to talk about is Project Tracker. It exists because someone told us to do it. There were internal reasons to have it, but you know, back in 2011, or I think someone said 2009 earlier, um, Project Tracker exists because they wanted more information about what we do. So we, we go, we gather information from DCIS, P6, Site Manager, PeopleSoft, ArcGIS Online. And if the data is incorrect in one of those systems, it's incorrect in Project Tracker. The project scores and locations are updated weekly. So that's why you say, oh, I did this project on Monday and I didn't see any th changes until the following Friday. That's because we updated every Friday. It's CSJ based. So if you know what that means, it's control section job based. There's 12,000 projects and it's available to the public. How do you get to it? Well, there's the hard way because that's what TxDOT does. We bury it on TxDOT.gov. <laughs> and we have a secret coded project tracker link in the front page, but they don't call it project tracker. They just call it planned projects. Or you have an easy way, we shorten the URL to text.gov slash PT. Anybody ever done PT? In the Army, that's physical training. But this is not physical training, this is Project Tracker. Okay, how it works, you pick a category, pick an area, click on the project. There's also a help file included to help you along. And now let's look at Project Tracker. When it loads the page, you get basically a map. There's stuff at the bottom of the map, but like I said, you pick what you want to look at, the district, pick Brian. It zooms to the map that location, shows all the projects in Brian. All right, you can sort the columns if you want. You can pick a project. It zooms the map to that project. It also populates the tables below with all the information we have from all the different systems. Okay? Back down. We also did a series of surveys and focus groups. Uh, the first, when we went through this first time, we just we did it. We had a short deadline, and we went and did it. It was great. But the survey went out to employees and external folks. About 1,800 people you know, participated in the survey, 500 and some odd external. The results, 66% of the people had never heard of it. Well, damn, okay? We're not very good at that part, <laughs> okay? Um, but we're trying to improve. Uh, the overall ratings for the 800 people that did take it, they were very poor, were 2%, poor, 9%, fair, good, excellent, we're okay. We like those to be a little bit higher. We're going to work on the fair group, get that 33% down, and bump up the good and the excellent. Okay. We also did the focus groups where we went and actually saw people work on Project Tracker. That's a humbling experience because you work on this thing for days and days and days and weeks, and you put it in front of somebody, and they can't use it, and you feel like a failure. Straight up, that's what it was. But we learned a lot. We learned a lot. So key improvements, things that happened, we learned from the survey and the focus group, make it easier to find Project Tracker. Okay, we're put on the main page. There's that looking for these thing. We shorten the link. We're telling people about it. Uh, you can export selected records. So there's some export tools in there. Before, when you export it, it gave you all 12,000 records. Nobody liked that. We know. We just want to make sure you had it all. <laughs> Public awareness, that's what we're doing now, public awareness. There's also a Project Tracker booth. If you haven't visited the Project Tracker booth, please do that. There's a reset button. 
I know everybody has a reset button, but we didn't put one on there that was easy to find. But now we've added a reset button up the top there. Sorry, I'm pointing. Of course you know where I'm pointing. There's a reset button. There will be an improved search in the fall, more info in the info box. I know that sounds silly, but the info box, uh, before, remember everything was below the table. You had to go to scroll down and try to expand the box to see the things. Now it's just going to be on the map. So when you click on it, like when you normally click on things, you'll have all that info there. You'll have a link to Google Maps so you can see the imagery. There'll be a streamlined design. You'll see that in the spring. More base maps and overlays. It'll get more planning map-ish. So you'll be able to add AADT, functional class, other things. There'll be two configurations. There'll be what we'll call light and maybe an advanced version. The light version will have that search box and maybe a couple things. Uh, the advanced version will let you drill right on down. Which year do you want? Do you want to cap the number of dollars for the estimated construction cost? Do you want to look at the work program? Things like that. And then there'll be a summary. So as you go through the map, uh, if you have 15 projects selected, it'll summarize the number of projects and the estimated construction costs. It's like a little report on the fly. So if someone looks at one, their state house district and he says, oh, how many projects do I have? Well, now you can't do it. You have to download it and do some math. Now it'll just tell you, oh, state, state house district one, you have 3,700 projects and it's worth a bazillion dollars. Congratulations. Tell your constituents. Okay. Closing things to remember, people. All those pretty pictures in the front. Attributes, locations, systems, PALs for short. Okay? That leads us to applications that provide employees access to information they can use in their work, which gives us the ability to increase our awareness and make informed decisions. Okay? TPP, data management, is a, is, you know, it's a reporting body. We collect information and then we put it back out. And it allows you to make better decisions. That's what it does. Important links, they're all here. Planning map, open data portal, annual reports, ArcGIS Online and Project Tracker. Email contacts, GIS related, there it is, roadway inventory, project tracker. My phone line, direct line, you can call me. If I see who it is, I may not answer. No, I'm just kidding. Just call me. And that's it. Thank you. We can take questions now.